These days, a politician is expected to be many things. A policymaker, an executive, a public servant, a news anchor, a mother, a father, a brother, a pig. <laughs> and now we might just be able to add magician to that list of many hyphens. Now you see it, now you don't. Plataforma noon, haka-haka na lang ngayon. Ang scandal noon, unfound allegations na lang daw ngayon. Last na, maybe we can add doctor to the list as well. A spin doctor, I mean. It takes some serious skill, skill to patch up tarnished track record that even plastic surgeons are jealous. <laughs> I got a little of cat cats in my brain right now. Trust issues activate? Should we distrust candidates who flip-flop on stances? Is past, past, future, future? And that's why today is the present? Gaano kahaba nga ba ang collective memory ng sambayanan? Only time will tell. Kabataan, it's now time. Now, youth talk. How do I reconcile my loved ones' political How do we campaign in a How do we engage our candidates? What if I don't like my elected opinion? How do you respond to respect my opinion? It is now time for the voice of the youth to be heard. Now, Youth Talk. Magandang, magandang, magandang araw, hapon, gabi sa ating Summer of Change, Kabataan. What else is changing? Changing partners. That's a film. The night also changes according to One Direction. At sabi nga ni Michael Jackson, if you want to make the world a better place, take a look at it yourself and make a change. And sabi ng bandang Scorpions, change is the wind. At sabi ng ating presidente noong 2016, change is coming. Grabe. Sa lahat ng pop culture references na yun, totoo lahat yun. <laughs> except yung pinakahuli. Anyway, <laughs> has change come? Or change coming ba ang nadat na natin? This is Shep Rod together with my co-host Aliyah hosting this very special episode of Now Youth Talk, 2022's most important conversations discussed. At di lang politiko ang pwedeng mag-change ng branding this season. For these special episodes, we are flipping the script with a special letter sender. Yes, dear viewers, at this critical time when we have to make the most critical decision of our upcoming six years, sadyang hindi na mapakali ang ating letter sender sa nakikita niyang disinformation sa larangan ng social media at mga chikahan in real life. Ayan. So, before we begin today's discussion, no, Aliyah, if I may, I'd mm. like to share something that's very, very funny and amusing to me. As in, to the point of okay. big change siya sa ano, politics, <laughs> our, our current affairs in our country. So, mm-hmm. I recently noticed na parang may spectacle ngayon. No? People are saying it's the Rufa May World Tour, basically. Oh, diba, go, it all go, started. Go. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it all started with Rufa May. Uh, they performed siya, diba, in like a BBM rally to like yeah. supreme disappointment from almost all her fans. But then, like a couple weeks later, mm. she appears in an Isko Moreno rally as well. So, like yeah. I don't even know what to say to that. How about you? Do you have any other funny or amusing changes than recently? Uh, wait, lang itong Rufa May World Tour. Nakita ko rin siya sa isang ano ah, Pacquiao rally. I really? show. Yeah. Wow. Actually I like yeah, dun nagulat ako kaya okay, okay. Okay, <laughs> <yun lang. laughs> okay, okay. going on, moving on. Yung akin naman is Mocha Uson and Banat by Changed Allegiances. 
while they oh. were expected to support the Dutertes and the admin bets in the elections, they were seen to be supporting Isko Moreno in his campaign sorties. Notably, her running mate, Michelle Gumabao, still supports the BBM Sara tandem. Okay. okay. Ayun, uh, you know, yung. honestly, I, I just found that out today. Ah. Like, I never expected those two news outlets pa naman to actually change allegiances agad-agad. Hmm. Well, yeah. so here's another one. No, before we start today's discussion, another funny change I saw in current affairs is, alam mo yung Freaky Friday tandems? Where uh, groups mm. have been coming out supporting different permutations of the pool of candidates for mm. president and vice president, such, a, such as Robredo and Sara, Isko and Sara. As in, permutations. <laughs> Para siyang math, alam mo yun. <laughs> Iba-iba yeah. lang siya every single time. But yeah, so that's a funny change I saw recently. Ayan, so ang dami talagang changes. Kaya siya sa natin, kilatisin natin, at saliksikin natin. Let us look in the to the deep and ro- rotten roots of this information and let's learn how to address it together. Kaya tara, the library is open. Our letter sender is eager for us to hear the truth. So let's put on our thinking cap and let's get right into it. Anong katotohanan, Kat Kat? Our letters in this series come from a mysterious Kat Kat. Now, our friend has a lot to say about the state of information in the country. So here's the gist. We don't know that much about her, but she says all will be revealed in due time. She's mysterious, she's captivating, and she's here to shed light on the truth. Kasama ni Kat Kat, alamin natin ang katotohanan tinatago ng kasinungalingan. This special episode series would not be possible if not for the vital support given to us by Facts First PH. Join more than 100 groups, coalitions, media, civil society organizations, business groups, the church, research groups, and legal organizations that are working together around a first of its its kind initiative called Facts First PH. Facts First PH brings together various sectors that are committed to promoting truth in the public space and exacting accountability from those who harm it with lies. Ask us through our email address to know more about this network. All right, sa ating mga listeners dyan, send your letters to us. We love mail. Bukas na bukas ang ating online mailbox at secretariat.nyv at gmail.com. Again, that's secretariat.nyv at gmail.com. Sumali sa ating chikahan at isa-isahin natin ang mga dapat pag-usapan ngayong 2022. Alright, ready ka na ba, Aliyah? Yes, ready. Okay, so, let ready, us ready begin. Alright, let's start. Let's begin the transmission. So, we have... Cat got six letter he right here. Okay, and I will read. In the scientific community, it is considered good science to change one's mind if new evidence in favor of an opposite hypothesis comes to light. Hmm. Sa isang punto ng kaisaysayan ng kaalaman, naniniwala ang mga tao na flat ang mundo at ito ay sentro ng universe. Hanggang sa may nag Hanggang sa may mas matinding ebidensya, ang wumaksi nito. Centuries of evolutions later, meron pa rin namang mga flat earthers at mouth breathers sa human species. Alright, yeah. indeed, Kat Kat. We discussed in our previous episode the large controversies and conspiracy theories propagating in our public discourse. As in, sobrang dami mm. ng conspiracy theories in the last episode, no? Historically, especially in academic societies, we always are averse to falsehoods. And we are no stranger to changing our mind upon the receipt of new information. Cognitive dissonance ata yung tawag dun, di ba? When someone rejects discourse and truth, possibly due to their various cognitive biases. So now, is the disinformation wildly happening right now a widespread case of cognitive dissonance? 
It is definitely in the air, but concerted efforts thrive on cognitive dissonance. Kaya so magdanakaw, mandarambong, at walang qualifications. Nandun naman ang good intentions, di ba? This is exactly the anti-discourse sentiment being harbored by the concerted disinformation effort in this election season. Let's continue with Kat Kat's letter. Indeed, opinions change with new information. Should we really vilify politicians who change positions? The line is a little more blurry on politics and the term flip-flopping was born. So, yan na nga. Yan na nga ang tanong. Ito na ang tanong for all of us and to all our listeners. Would you trust politicians who change their opinions? And what are the factors in weighing their change of opinion? Okay, so ikaw ba? Would you trust someone who would change their opinions? Well, if like they change their op- yeah. Well, if they change their opinion for the benefit of the countrymen, diba? or for just essentially mm. for the greater good, then of course you should change your opinion. Yeah, diba? that's what we're trying to let people know, diba? that it's okay mm. to change your opinion if you're about to vote for the perfect person, or if not the perfect person, the right person who will lead the country. So it's yes, essentially yes. that lang naman. Yes. And ako, same lang din. Parang okay lang naman if they change their opinion. Pero not to the point na um, so, sobrang layo at contradicting nila sa isa't isa. For right. example, it, pag kunyari, mas worst pa yung opinion na change niya kaysa yung okay na nga before pero mas pangit na yung ngayon. <laughs> yung parang ganun. So, yeah. So, ang problema kasi... Ma- okay, let's go back to Kat Kat's letter, okay? Um, okay. Ang problema kasi madalas ang mga politiko, lalo na pag kumakandidato, they keep changing sides or want to take both sides of an issue. Parang namamangka sa lahat ng ilog to get as many votes as possible. Yep. Kat Kat has very correct sentiments there kasi this concept is called fence-sitting. Uh, in mm-hmm. psychology, it's normal to be indecisive, but in politics, it's saying yes to everything. Be mindful of what your politicians say, dear reader. Baka meron doon nag-yes sa mababang presyo ng kanin, nag-yes din sa pagbenta ng agricultural <laughs> lands to developers. Pwede ba both? It's up to oh, us no. to challenge these inconsistencies. Yes, meron mga nag-yes sa laban against development aggression, pero nag-yes din sa mismong developers na nagtatayo ng CBDs sa lupang tinatayuan ng mga vital communities natin. It just doesn't add up to ano. And beware sa mga candidates who says yes to everything kasi mas mabigat pa ang ulap sa mga pangakong yan. <laughs> yan. So, eto no, ilan sa mga recent incidents of changing stances relevant mm. sa mas nalalapit pa nating pagboto. Changing minds regarding running for positions. An article by Inquirer entitled, entitled, I'm Not Running, the Most Eaten Words in PH Politics, revealed that several prominent government officials who swore they would not run in the elections eventually do. Some of these government yeah. officials are... Number one, President Rodrigo Duterte, who mentioned he will retire from politics for good in 2015. However, in the same year, he withdrew his bid to seek re-election in Davao City. He filed for his certificate of candidacy for president. Number two, presidential candidate Manila City Mayor Isco Moreno mentioned that he has no plans in running for president as he will be focusing on his duty to the people in Manila City as their mayor. Hmm. Eventually, he changed his mind, filed for COC for president as well. And number three, Isco Moreno also called out presidential candidate Vice President Lady Robredo who initially declared that she did not have any plans to run for presidency. However, she was also found to have filed her Certificate of Candidacy or the COC for president. Uh, let's take mm. note, however, Moreno and Robredo have similar reasons for deciding to run for presidency after declaring they will not do so. It is both grounded on the urgency, urgency to answer issues of the country. Three famous examples, no, three very, very famous uh, uh, presidential very, candidates very right now. Exactly. So at first, they did, they really did say they will not run for presidency, and then eventually they do. But yeah, you change essence, of opinion. For you, is that like okay lang ba? It's okay. They they did run for 
uh, urgency to answer issues of the country, as we, we mentioned yeah. earlier. However, for the one of the candidates there, I'm not, I'm not going to name drop anymore. I'm not sure if it was an <laughs> okay decision, <laughs> no? Anyway, so okay, let's move on. Okay, moving on. Um, next naman is Marcos on church endorsements. Okay. Mm. The camp of presidential candidate Ferdinand Bongbong Marcos Jr. has urged the Catholic clear- clergy to refrain from meddling in politics. Mm. Despite Marcos's call against religious groups involving themselves in the elections, Marcos's own camp gained the endorsement of several several religious groups and or leaders such as one Bishop Ted Malangen of Jesus Christ the Deliverer Church, number two, Brother Mike Valerde of El Shaddai, and number three, self proclaimed appointed son of God, Pastor Apollo Kibuloy of Kingdom Hi. of Jesus Christ. <laughs> the sigh. <laughs> it was clarified, however, that El Shaddai leader brother Mike Valerde's endorsement of presidential candidate Bongbong Marcos and his running mate, Davao City Mayor Sara Duterte, was his own and not of the church groups. In an opinion article by Rappler, they mentioned that when Bongbong Marcos's camp said that they're cl- uh, that the clergy are meddling in politics, we are given a sneak preview of an administration that would want a church to keep quiet in matters of development, social justice, and civil liberties. If, alam mo, like, so, sobrang ano, informal ng sabihin ko ngayon, pero what mm. BBM did with regards to the Catholic Church, it's really the same as what the mafia did uh, wow. in Boston and other states uh, in the in yeah. the US. Ba- basically, they bought the church to work for mm. them. Yes. So the church, like Sige, they will not meddle in politics. Pero if it's serving mm. the benefit of the, the administration, mm-hmm. then oh my god, <laughs> but, but, yeah. yeah, it's essentially the same. And uh, so let's move on. No, here's another one. Laxon Soto's true opposition. In an article by Get Real Philippines, it was mentioned that the leverage of the Laxon Soto tandem was their ability to appeal to voters who are neither for the administration nor the opposition. Rappler also reported on Laxon's comments stating that other candidates were not the enemies, but the issues that many of them have tried and failed to end, such as systemic poverty and rampant corruption. This position of non-retaliation is consistent with the Laxon Soto campaign presenting itself as a campaign for issues only. No names dropped. Although the tandem places themselves in a vaguely different position other than for the administration or the opposition, Tribune Net Philippines reported that Laxon clarified their stance as pro-Filipinos, mentioning that they even had a meeting with Vice President Lenny Robredo to discuss a possible union so the opposition can have a unified presidential candidate. However, Laxon continued that there was a resistance with Robredo, so the proposal failed. Hmm. Mm, and <laughs> Yeah, it's so <laughs> confusing. Yeah. Do you have another example? Okay, so for the next one naman is, mm. is Comorello support for Duterte. Rappler reported that as early as February 2022, Isko Moreno already mentioned yung DDS si Domagso die hard supporter. Puede. Domagoso, sorry. Yung DDS is Domagoso die hard supporter. Puede. Even before that, in 2021, he had already shown his support for Duterte as he said. If I am the own if I am the one they will choose if the, I am the one they will choose thank you in advance as mentioned in the article of Nikki Asia in October 2022 Rappler exposed that Moreno's yellow tard outburst spur of the moment remark could be an experiment to woo Duterte supporters who would do anything to shot your brother from Malacañang 
In February 2022, a group called Mayor Rodrigo Roa Duterte National Executive Coordinating Committee or MRRD NECC endorsed Escomereno for presidency. The president of the group mentioned that they are supporting Moreno for his promises to continue the projects that Duterte administration has started. It was mentioned that these Duterte supporters voting for Moreno is no-brainer as President Duterte himself would incline to vote for Moreno. They, they reached this conclusion through a process of elimination such that it would be unlikely that President Duterte would vote for Marcos or Robredo. Ayan, palala so... ng palala yung examples <laughs> na, natin. No? Earlier, it was vague yeah. and confusing. Now, I don't even know how to <laughs> describe the situation that is Isco Moreno's support for Duterte. Because, yeah. like, is it like what? Vote buying or... <laughs> Party changing? I don't know. But I, I have another example for you. So, Lenny on ATA or the NTF ELCAC or Peace Talks. Vice President Lenny Robredo has vowed to abolish the controversial anti insurgency task force of the Duterte administration and instead endeavor a, and I quote, conducive environment for peace talks with insurgents. Robreda mentioned that she would veer away from purely militarist approaches to ending internal armed conflict. She aired her concern that the project could be a, and I quote, Tokhang version 2, in the sense mm. that the mandate given to the body will be abused or used to harass mm. people. Much to the disdain of the NTF ELCAC, Lorraine Badoy, their spokesperson, demanded that Lenny denounce the CCP, NPA, NDF to prove that she has no allegiance with them. Mm. She called on the future administration to create a more conducive and enabling environment for peace negotiations to resume. Her plan is to involve civil society organizations, the private sector, and the church. Robreda also pointed out that the government reintegration programs must be strengthened for former rebels, families, and communities mm. to allow them to lead peaceful and productive civilian lives. The intention is supposedly good, kasi, no? But it also makes you wonder about a couple of things, really. Yeah. Tama, tama. So, okay, so next up naman, for Manny on LGBTQ. Ito medyo maraming clamor to noon. Presidential candidate Senator Manny Pacquiao mentioned in a video posted on local TV5's election site that quote unquote same sex relationships are worse than animals he even added that animals are better by comparison as they are able to distinguish between male or from female he later defended himself by saying that he j- is just telling the truth of what the bible says prominent figures in the industry such as jose marie visceral or vice ganda and Isa Seguera answered back at answered back and it caused an uproar in social media, leading to the hashtag hashtag pray for Manny Pacquiao. Pacquiao eventually apologized to Manny for his comments right after. Did you know or did, do you remember back in twenty sixteen? This was international news. Cause mm. Yes. Literally, Manny Pacquiao lost his Nike endorsement deal over that one remark. Yes. The moment yes. Nike heard of it, they dropped Pacquiao and it became mm. ano, an international frenzy. No? So, looking back, I think Manny has changed for the better. Naman, pero I really mm-hmm. wish he didn't say that. Sayang yung, yeah. <laughs> sayang yung Nike deal. <laughs> so, with all those examples, no, let's go back to Cat Cat's letter. Mm-hmm. She continues. Ikaw, ang botante, ang magdedesisyon kung talaga bang consistent sa kanila mga ideolohiya ang mga pahayag nila tuwing kampanya. At lalo mas mahalaga kung aaksunan at tutuparin ba nila ang mga pinangako nila. O kung sinabi lang nila ang gusto mong marinig. Hmm, tama kat kat. So where is the disinformation in all of this you ask? The disinformation is when these changes in opinions are reported at face value, 
with no historization, context, or scrutiny. The lack of information is the boon of disinformation and misinformation. We can look into the contending psychological concepts of primacy and recency, wherein these things you've not either heard first or last will make a mark in your memory. And very good insights, no? Without mm. reading the briefs or the news, Ikaw, Aliyah, would you have known at all anything besides what is reported at face value? How do we scrutinize changes in opinion? But actually, like even mm. with my question just now, you already answered it because Mm-mm. as you said just earlier, uh, what was that again? The boon of... The boon of uh, uh, misinformation. Ayan. Ayan. The bo- uh, the lack of information is the boon of disinformation and mm. misinformation. So yung hindi sapat yung information, information, information mm. na meron ka. Yun. It, it can immediately lead to disinformation. No? It's yes, all, yes. grabe no, they are all tied together. Like how would you know what is fact from fiction? If you don't even have the necessary information to discern what is fact mm. or fiction. Mm. It, grabe talaga. Alam mo, candidates and politicians' minds really do change. Yung isa nga, di ba, nagbago ang isip dahil nanood lang, <laughs> nanood lang ng Netflix film. Kaya alam mo yun, Aliyah. Si, ano, itago na lang natin sa pangalang ano, no, Ping Lakson. <laughs> Now, sige, how do we react to flip-flopping or changes in opinion nga ba? Actually, ito yung part na pinuforward namin now sa, na, natin sa Now Youth Vote. Uh, with the active civic participation will be in charge. Ka- kausapin natin ang ating mga kandidato. Siyempre, no candidate is perfect, diba? Pero if we have an open line with them, our candidates can be better held accountable to carry pro-people platforms. Ang bongo, ano? <laughs> That is the scent of our democracy working. Hindi dapat ang mga sugo ang elected officials na, officials natin rather sila ang gagawa ng bidding natin sa kanilang positions of power hala tunog oligarchy na naman no papit lang ba natin ang presidente syempre hindi De. hindi mo matatawag na pansariling interest ang kapakanan ng nakararami mm. that's our key difference from being a conflict of interest in governance and legislation mas marami tayo kaya dapat tayo ang marinig tama tama kaya babalik tayo kay Kat Kat. Uh, sabi niya, hindi ba may tawag rin character development Ooh. or redemption arc? Mm-hmm. I guess it's a go- it's good that a Netflix film changed your views on death penalty. <laughs> But if you're a law enforcer turned legislator, I'm not sure if that's Chad or cringe. Ooh. Ayun. Na-mention na nga ni Kat Kat yung Netflix film. <laughs> And also, it sounds like Kat Kat sprinkled in a little detail about her. Someone's in a bit like Gen Z in her words, diba? Mm. Chad that cringe. Yeah. <laughs> Streamer ba si ate? <laughs> <laughs> Kat Kat, maybe her own public figure if that lines up. It's also surprising uh, with the amount of pop culture references Kat mm. Kat has. I really feel like she's a uh, young blood. Yeah. With all that knowledge, no. But anyway, it's normal to doubt naman kasi your politicians before you vote for them. Rather, yeah, it's actually necessary that you do doubt them. You have mm. to test their credibility, integrity, knowledge, and all that before they take a position of power. Paulit-ulit na kami, pero equal natin sila. Mm. Hindi sila higher. Continuing with Kat Kat's letter. If a candidate can articulate and acknowledge why they've changed their mind, at syempre, iisa lang naman ang lagi nating babalikan. If the change of heart is based on hard facts, then it's not really flip-flopping. Tama, tama. Tama ka dyan, Kat Kat. And continuing, you either die a hero or you live long enough to see yourself become a villain. But some just live long enough and flip-flop to distort history. Yes, I'm looking at you, Mang Johnny. <laughs> While those dinosaur memes are funny, 
let's not forget the turncoats blatant flip-flopping throughout Philippine history. Marami pa bukod sa kanya, uh, marami pa bukod sa kanya, kaya nga hindi na lang prutas ang balimbing ngayon. Ah, grabe, kat, kat. <laughs> Sabi niya, si Mang Johnny Ponce Enrile ba to? <laughs> The one that um, present in any and all administrations, but never as an opposition. Mm. Sounds like a yes man to us, no? Turncoatism is the word here. Or in Filipino, tama ba? Or tama si kat kat balimbing. <laughs> okay, so for this naman, mayroon akong tanong for this, Rod. Is it okay. normal for today's um, politics ba na What have you heard about like turncoatism in the Philippine politics? Parang yung yes na lang sa lahat, kanon. It, it, it could be, or I mean, I think it's still normal today. Political turncoatism nga naman, no, is the act of changing party affiliation by a, a candidate. If it's mm. necessary, again, for the benefit of the people and the country, then why not, diba? But if mm-hmm. you're only serving your own personal benefits Inter. or agenda, then or you yourself... Or protecting your own family or protecting your name. <laughs> mm, <laughs> yeah. Kaya ka... yeah. You're so... not supposed to engage in turncoatism then. I mean, that not just makes you a hypocrite, that makes you a... Yeah. An evil person, per se? Yeah. I don't know. But yeah, let's not delve too much into that. So, siguro, ang talagang kailangan maano na ng mga politicians natin is always decide for the common good. Exactly. So, if if it would require you to change your opinions on something, if it's for the common good, then why not? So, yeah. Yes, precisely. So, moving forward... Sentiments in school student councils show that students are observed to have a disdain for partisanship. Kesyo pan sariling interest na lang if one molds themselves per a party's ideals and carries the party's advocacies into their elected term. On a national scale, however, political parties in the Philippines, as written in many research papers, hardly follow any strict ideologies. Sabi nga ng ilan dyan, grupo ng mayayaman or mayaman lang ang politic, political parties. And we're inclined to agree actually. <laughs> yeah, was it 2016 when the Philippine Congress contorted itself to turn into the over 300 member supermajority under Duterte's political party? Scholars mm-hmm. received this move with much disdain. A parliament or a congress, according to them, is supposed to argue and not be a rubber stamp of the executive. Votes on bills were usually landslides with little or no room for deliberation or the scrutiny any form of policy should go through. Yes. And we will go back to Kat Kat, no? Mr. Peanut Butter proclaimed, quote, I am specifically on the side of the facts. And also on the side of feelings. Quote, When he ran for governor, and then the whole crowd clapped and cheered. End of transmission. Ganda no Mr. Peanut Butter. <laughs> An eerie image, actually. Especially in today's political climate. Paulit-ulit, but beware the yes man. Let's be the pakipot in the panliligaw scenario and know yes. when one's intentions are skewed. OMG, sobrang relate ako dyan. Yes, true, true, true. <laughs> and that was the message, guys. Yun na yung sinabi ni Miss Katkat. And now it is time to pass it on. I hope what Katkat shared today fueled you to vet your sources well. And to consume media more mindfully. Para makatulong sa ating pagsisiyasat para sa katotohanan, here are some guidelines on how to spot and address disinformation online and in your community. All right, number one guideline again, keep critical. Once again, that's keep critical. While today's culture of conspiracy is fueled by a long and brutal campaign to discredit our mainstream information providers, there is something essential we must extract and bring to light in this new practice. 
Always remain critical of the information you receive. Check your sources as well as your sources sources. Again po, sinestress namin yan. Ha? Kahit tama po yung information na nakuha nyo, kung yung kapitbahay nyo or kapamilya or yung katrabaho, hindi. Then what's the point of fighting for the truth, diba? So make sure you also check their sources. Differentiate between primary sources from while the event was happening. Secondary sources pr- processed after the event has happened. And tertiary sources written with accounts about the event. In simple terms, no. if you see a piece of news article on one side, be sure na totoo pa rin siya in the other side. Yes. Rule of thumb yes, lang. Yes, tama, tama, tama. And for the second one is the 3D. Discredit and deplatform disinformation. Disinformation peddlers have to be neutralized. If in social media, refrain from giving them any traffic or metrics screenshot. The disinformation and refrain from sharing, quote, screenshot the disinformation and refrain from sharing, quote, tweeting, liking, or replying to them. It has been revealed that many studies that social media algorithms cater strongly to disagreements and polarization of people of opposing opinions. Kaya iwasan ang mag away dyan. Let's always go back to starting constructive conversations. And this is all the more reason for us to start conversations on the ground. Without the help of the internet, this information spreads into communities with impunity. Consider spreading materials that counter and discredit this information and strengthen the narrative of truth. Kaya, this leads us to our sec, our third and final tip for today. And that is to amplify. Again, the final tip is amplify. We cannot claim to be experts in every field, nor do we want to. Let's foster this culture of critical thought by sharing the truth in any way that we can. Our letter sender, CatCat, will be sharing materials you can share with your community on ground. And so again, with all the lessons and discussions we've gathered mm. today, how do we fight disinformation in our own way? Ikaw, Aliyah. Like, ano? How would you... Uh, let us fight disinformation by keep critical, <laughs> discredit, Ayan. and de-platform <laughs> disinformation and amplify. Okay, that yeah, is actually the perfect natin. answer. Mm. Yes. Nasagot mo na. Hindi ko na kailangan sagutin, no? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, ngunit pawang gawa or pawang mga letra lamang si Katkat. At kami, mga boses lang ngayon. Kayo ang magiging tinatawan niya at pagsusulong ng katotohanan sa ating komunidad. So, mga dear listeners, we are all counting for you. All right, we are now at the tail end of our discussion and while we close out our episode for today, may paunting plug portion lang muna po tayo. So guys, uh, be sure to follow me on Instagram, that's at chef.rod and be sure to like, subscribe and share the videos of Recreate. We have an upcoming episode where we invited guests to vote for their next president through a game. So may mga twists and turns po siya and it's gonna be a very exciting episode. So again, that's youtube.com slash Recreate. Yeah. <laughs> yes, recreate. So I have plug ko lang din. Um my Instagram Alia Denise underscore. And if you want to have conversations about politics and anything under the sun, um DM me and message me there. Yes. So again, this is a special episode series that would not be possible if not for the vital support given to us by Fax First PH. Sabi nga ni Nobel Prize laureate, Maria Risa, without facts, you can't have truth. All right. So who will you vote for if you don't have the facts? How many times have you been attacked online because you challenged a lie? You are not alone. To protect our elections and our democracy, we need to protect the facts. Join more than 100 groups, coalitions, media, civil society organizations, business group, the church, research groups, and legal organizations that are working together around for a first-of-its-kind initiative called 
Facts First PH brings together various sectors that are committed to promoting truth in the public space and exacting accountability from those who harm it with lies. All right, ask us through our email address to know more about this network. We'll see you out there. Join us in this series of episodes as we read each of CatCat's transmissions of truth. Ngayong 2022, ang panawagan ng Now You Vote ay kabataan ng maririnig, katotohanan ng mananaig. It's time to exchange your views and knowledge with your peers, engage your communities and candidates for a meaningful change beyond the ballot, and commit to your right to suffrage as your vote determines the Philippines of our generation and maybe the next. Bukas na bukas ang aming online tanggapan for youth activation sessions and resources to help you make your big decisions and to nurture your important conversations. Email us at secretariat.nyv at gmail.com. Once again, that's secretariat.nyv at gmail.com. And you can now also join our Discord server. Makiugnay, makipagtalakay. At magboto kasama ng inyong kapwa kabataan sa discord.gg slash nowyouvotehub. Alright, and that is our episode for today. Once again, this has been Chef Rod together with my co-host Aliyah. Reminding you all to participate in 2022's most important conversation and to make your 2022's biggest decision on May 9, 2022. Good evening everyone and see you next episode. See you.